back. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use Forescan software with an extended license to program two new keys for my Mazda 5. We're down to one key. A lot of times you'll, you know, you'll buy a car and it'll only come with one key. And you would like to have a second key, you know, you'd like to have a spare. So how I went about this was I downloaded Forescan, which is free software. Uh, you can do advanced programming for Ford and Mazda vehicles. Okay, so if you own a Ford or Mazda, go online, download Forescan. Look up in the top of this video right here, right there. And there's another video I made about how to get Forescan, how to download it, and how to buy the extended license. It's about $10 American for a full year, and it allows you to do extra programming and different things like that. Otherwise, you would just be able to, you know, see what the you know the different things are like for your seat belt and you can reset codes on this and stuff like that too so it's really handy to have if you've got a ford or a mazda like i say okay so i went on ebay and i bought two key fobs now you got to be careful you got to get the ones that have the chip in them uh you can get ones that are just the shell you know and you got to be careful you're, if you're just buying the fob you're often just buying the shell but you got to make sure you buy from somebody that uh, specializes in selling these types of keys it comes with a programmable chip in there and it comes with the key blank okay now for this car what i did was i took the key that i had and i just went to a hardware store that has a like a manual key cutter and he cut the teeth on here for me now a lot of guys will say oh no i don't want to take the risk you know uh because it'll ruin it if it's not right but i said okay for whatever it costs for one of these uh these were about mm, 35 dollars a piece uh, for the for, for the whole assembly so I thought okay if he messes it up he messes it up so actually he didn't the, the, the keys fit perfectly and they'll turn in the ignition uh, the only thing they won't do is because the the chip is not programmed yet they won't start the car okay so I got the teeth cut on both of them all right so these are brand new and so we're gonna go through the process using Forescan to get these keys to work okay so what I got is I got a Forescan downloaded on a laptop and I've just got the power connector hooked up to an extension cord because it's uh, I don't want the battery to drop down in the laptop while I'm doing this and okay so I've got the keys ready what you're gonna need to have as well and that's all explained in that other video I talked about is you're gonna need an adapter this is called an ELM adapter and what they do is they, they're an interface between the OBD2 port on your vehicle and the laptop, okay? So that this Forescan software can communicate with the vehicle. All right, so down under the dash is your OBD2 port. Uh, the port is usually under the driver's side. See down here, you're going to connect to the vehicle. So you're going to connect that and it says, okay, please make sure the following initial conditions are met. The ignition key is in the on position and it is, and the HS MS CAN switch on the ELM 327, if available, is in the HS CAN position. Uh, there's a high speed and a, and a medium speed CAN. So HS is high speed, MS is medium speed. The HS is up and the MS is down so we're gonna have it in the up position okay I'm gonna put that back in the OBD2 port and those conditions are met okay now it's okay it's checking basically it runs a bit of uh, checks and stuff it's here. so connection to the vehicles established let's go ahead and see if that's okay so we have a Mazda 5 North America VIN number whatever that's the car Okay, we're going to click yes. And then it's going to run down and it's going to say, please set the high speed, medium speed can switch to the medium speed can. And then click OK. So it wants to run through all the different areas that, it's, that it scans. Okay, so then I just clicked it down. Okay. All right. Anything that's in a little yellow, yellow triangle with an exclamation point is often a trouble. So, so it says here, okay, there's a diagnostic trouble code 
and it might tell us what it is here. If we look over here at DTCs up here. All right, okay, there's a EATC. There's a, a B261FF code stored in this computer. So that's um, the sun load sensor short to ground possible cause the sun load sensor is faulty. So up on the dash, there's a, a little sensor that uh, indicates whether the sun is shining on the dash or not. But anyway, uh, that's not important for today. Okay, so what we're going to do, so what we want to do here today is we want to go into diagnostic functions, and we're going to go into PATS programming. That's passive anti-theft system programming. Okay, so we're going to click on that, and we're going to click go. There's a little arrow down here to make it go. Okay, so ignition key programming. This procedure will add keys to the PATS system memory. Keys already known to the PATS system will not be erased. All right. All right, it says, is the vehicle equipped with a keyless push start system? And it is not. Please set the HS MS CAN switch to the HS CAN bus position and click OK. So I'm going to bring that up. It's still plugged in, so I'm going to bring it up to the HS position. And we're going to click OK. Now, number of keys stored to continue. OK. Feedback needed. Code access requires retrieving a security out code from the PATS and exchanging the security out code for a security in code. The in code will then be entered into the diagnostic tester and security access is then given. Forescan can generate the, the co in code for you. Would you like to do it now? And that's the way to go. So you go, uh, yes, we want them to provide the code. see it's the bar is moving for the time it taking to do that okay so we're just gonna wait for that to proceed now you see why I have the laptop plugged in because sometimes these procedures will take uh, you know quite some time maybe not you know enough to kill a battery in a laptop but I don't want to take any chances so I've got the laptop plugged into power so we're going to turn off the key that's in there we're going to remove it we're going to insert the new blank key in there Set the ignition switch to on and then press OK. OK, watch this. OK. Off. New key in. Turn to on. And press OK. Pat's key programming successfully. Please cycle and the ignition off and then back to on. Off and back to on. And that's... Okay. Okay, it says number of keys stored three. Okay, that's why we have uh, we had two keys that come with the car. One of them actually got lost, so that's why we're doing this. So we were down to one key. Now it's still recognizing the first two, and then now it says we have three. Now what we're going to do is let's let's see if we can program that last key. All right. All right. So we're going to do the same ignition key programming. We're going to go. Okay. Coded access requires an exchange. Continue. Okay. Let's see, it's just moving here. Okay, here we go. Off. New key in. Turn it to the on position. And press OK. Pat's key programming successful. Please cycle the ignition off and then back on. So off and then on. Now it talks about the number of keys. It says number of keys stored, four. All right, so that's that was the two original keys and that's the two keys I just programmed today and that's our lost key. Okay, that's good, that's perfect, okay. So we should have it all done and stored and all these keys should work. 
So we're going to exit. Exit. OK. Now, let's try all, all the keys and see what happens. OK, this is the last key that I programmed in the ignition. OK. So let's see. That starts the car. Number one. Let's turn it off. OK. And here's the first key that I programmed this afternoon. Starts the car. No problemo. All right. And now here's the original key. One of the two originals that came with the car. And it still remembers that. So we have three working keys for this car as of this moment. Okay, so now we've got our two new keys programmed to start the car, but we haven't programmed the fobs to operate the, the remote locks. Okay, so, so how you do that, it's very simple. You leave your driver's door ajar, okay? And then you cycle the key three times in the ignition to the run position, and then you take out the key and push twice on the lock button, okay? And you do that successively for each key that you're trying to program, okay? So let's do that. So we have, we have one of the, the new ones that the, this part of the fob has not been programmed. The door is open. So we're going to go once, twice, three times. We're going to take it out. We're going to close the door, open the door, close the door, open the door, close the door, open the door. And we're going to hit lock twice. And then that key should work. Let's see. Close our door. Okay, that locks it, sets the alarm, unlocks it. Okay, let's try the other key. We can do that now with this key. So we're going to leave the driver's door open. We're going to go once, twice, three times, take it out, shut the door, open it. Shut the door, open it. Shut the door, open it. And then hit lock twice. And the lock cycled. Shut the door, lock, unlock, lock, set the alarm, unlock. So they all work now. Okay, that's how that's done. Simple as that. And one thing to note, you don't program all Mazda and Ford vehicles this way. Some have a different uh, procedure, but it's for the lion's share of them. Most of them will be programmed this way, the fobs. Uh, some are uh, just a number of clicks, like I think the Ford Ranger has, uh, I think, seven cycles of the key, and then you hit the lock twice. Uh, instead of opening and closing the door, they don't uh, have a door uh, feature. Let's try all, all three keys now. They're, they're all uh, supposed to start the car, and all the locks are, are supposed to work on them. So let's try it. This is the original one we had. Let's start the car with it. Okay, that starts the car. And let's see if we can lock the door. Doors lock, unlock. Okay, set that aside. That's one of the ones we programmed. Let's see if it'll start the car. Starts the car. And let's see if it'll lock and unlock the doors. It locks and unlocks the door. Okay, let's try the last one. Starts the car. locks and unlocks the car. And it's as simple as that. Hopefully this video has helped someone. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you again here very soon on Everyday Projects. Bye for now.